So some stuff that Eric is going to show us is for one, how he uses the Oxy one. And I'm going to let, I'm going to leave him to it. I mean, I'll, I'll interrupt of course, cause I can't help myself. Uh, but how do you use Oxy one and stuff that I asked Eric to show me is how he makes such good rumble bass and uh, his technique for that. So without further ado, this is Serco, Eric. It's hey. a total badass, and we're playing a show together tonight. If you're in Seattle, come on down to the Four Bs in Ballard at seven o'clock, and come check us both out. But uh, I'll yep. leave you to it. Tell, teach me the ways. <laughs> the ways of techno. Show okay. me the ways of techno. I'd say, did you, by the way, speaking of that, because that sounded very Star Warsy, the the Jedi ways of techno. Mm -hmm. I made that comment the other day in your stream about you being the Yoda of the of the Octatrack and another YouTuber mentioned me saying that on your stream, oh, really? which I thought was really funny that, that it's become this kind of meta thing of people like, Oh, I watched that. And it made me think about this. So we become anyway. meta? Oh God. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, so yeah, so basically we were talking before the, the stream about how we both use the gear really differently, but it's the, kind of the same gear. It's my, my gear is basically routed the same way that Matt's is. I have drums going in one side, melodics going in the other. Um, when I play tonight, I will also have a modular that goes right here, which I didn't set up here. And then I also have a 1010 black box that usually is right here for doing kind of longer time stretched samples because none of the other gear does that very well except the Octatrack and I'm using that for effects. So, um, so if I want a vocal or a, an atmosphere or something, I tend to use that. Um, but everything else is kind of set up the way, you know, audio routing and all that stuff, the same way that, that Matthew does it. One way that's one thing that's different is that, um, I'm using the Syntact as all voices, um, not as drums, which I think Matt doesn't use it as drums either, but I'm not sequencing it from inside the box. Um, the rhythm is doing all of the drums and that is being sequenced from inside the box here. You see all the sequences. So this is actually there. just like, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm gonna interrupt already. Um, so Eric just mentioned that he does use this as like a 12 voice uh, multi-tambral synthesizer as opposed to a drum machine. Yep. And so do I, I do every once in a while, put some percussion on there, but like, why do you do it? Um, I mean, I, you would be hard pressed to find a 12 mono synth with sequencers with well, even without sequencers, I'm, I'm right, not using right. a sequencer, yeah, this but even, even, even 12 voice multi timbral in a box this size. You'd be, right. be hard pressed. There's not a lot of them out there. Um, I use in my modular, I use the oxy coral because it's eight voice multi timbre which is super cool to have a lot of voices in a really small space i like having a lot of variety but in a really compact setup so that i can use it for travel um like he matt's out when i came in here like all of this with all my stuff to come up here all fits in a rolling carry-on in a backpack um including my modular including all the cables including everything so that um i can travel with my setup and that's really important to me but also to be able to have this much variety of voices so to have 12 different voices in a space this size is is pretty amazing you know and i was like the i like i love the digitone for that but it was only four and then this came out and i don't think i've touched my digitone since this came out because of that i was i was using it as that I, yeah. many voices i said something space. very similarly on the last yeah. last time i streamed i was talking about how my digitone has become kind of replaced by the syntax because mm -hmm. of how i use it and how the kind of music that i make yep. i just want sequencers with voices and this and I like building layers. Yeah. And there's 12 layers. Exactly. Right? Yeah. yeah. You, you do something really interesting, though. You, you, like, you use this, the Oxy, to sequence this, which in the, like, when I when you said that to me, I was immediately like sacrilege. Yeah. Well, you know, the like, first thing when I said that I was yeah. sequencing this with this, the first vo word out of Matt's mouth was, why? And I was like, well, here's why. Because <laughs> right. there's, you know, the uh, I get asked all the time why I use this and, you know, is it better than these or which is better? They're both really different and they do different things. Each one does things better than the other. What's great about the, the electron devices is if you want to parameter lock um, parameters of your voices, whether it's a, whether it's a synth voice or a sample or whatever, you want to use the electron sequencer because you can do all of that really easily inside the machine without any kind of CC messages or any of that stuff. However, other than the Octatrack, um, none of the other machines can be, uh, quantized to key. So you can, with, with the machines now with the, the keyboard mode and the fold, the keyboard fold, you can do it if you're playing in or recording notes in. But what I love to do, and I'll show you in just a second is I love to, um, 
improvise. All my sets are improvised like from scratch. And so I'm going from blank sequencers when I start. And I like to be able to generate notes and have them be in key, but be still random. And so there's a bunch of different ways that I can randomly generate notes in this um, and, and rhythms as well and have them stay in whatever key I choose. And actually something else we didn't talk about before is you can change the key and change the scale once you already have stuff in there and it will move. So you can do key changes just by okay. turning the knob and you change right. to a new key, which is super handy for people who don't want to have to actually play notes and play a keyboard and change right. keys. Well, and also playing a keyboard doesn't lend itself to this at all anyway. No. Like, what would you even do with it? Yeah. You know? I actually had somebody um, do a comment on one of my videos the other day that said, because um, I was talking about um, improvising live. And I, I did a demo on how to do something. And they said, um, you're, you're not playing live because you're not doing anything. <laughs> and I was like, well, what do you consider doing something? And I would refer people to artists like Jeff Mills, who, if you ever want to see somebody play a sequencer as an instrument, watch Jeff Mills play an entire show on a TR-909. And it will blow your mind because he is playing it as an instrument. It's you'll not... You'll you know, also make your back hurt. Yeah, the way he kind of sits on the floor and hunches <laughs> over everything. But That yeah, video is amazing. Yeah, so. he's, he, you know, it's amazing. But for me, that was kind of, that's always been kind of an inspiration of, of how to play a sequencer because you are, in fact, playing the sequencer just like you would play keys on a keyboard. It's just a different set of skills. It's a different, it's a different way to input the, the stuff. You're turning knobs, you're changing parameters, you're changing notes, you're moving things around just like you do on a keyboard, but in a, with a different you know means of inputting that stuff into the synthesizer. I mean, I couldn't agree more. Yeah, and that's kind of why I use this long long route around to get to the same thing. That's why I'm using the the Oxy One is because for me this is an incredibly playable sequencer in the way that I make music, which I guess I'll show a little bit about how that yeah, works. Yeah, I was, yeah. I was showing Matt before, so um, I have this set up a little bit for the show for tonight. So it's a different sequencer. So I'm only going to use one sequencer right now, which is this one, which is going to the Syntac. And then I've got eight channels here, which are going to channels one through eight on the Syntac. So each line of this is basically the same as this. It's 16 step sequencer. So the, each one of these is one of these. And it's each one is going to a different voice. Wait, so do you ever go past 16 steps? I don't because I like to see it here. And the way I get a lot of variation in what I, well, I shouldn't say I don't. I do sometimes if I want something that only occurs maybe once every 32 or 64, I would I would ex extend it out for that. But I generally, in order to get variation, instead of writing a longer sequence with variation, I'll use different sequence lengths. So it will repeat at different lengths to get that variation. And you'll there. keep writing something new. Yes. As you perform. Yes. Which is a different ass, which is a little bit different than how I perform. Because when I play, I have these parts that are built out in my tracks and I have to achieve certain right milestones, so so to speak, yep. to get to the crescendo and stuff. Whereas you have more freedom with your improvisation, which I think is really cool. And I would like to dive further into more of the improv. Yeah, it's it's something that I love about, you know, I've only been doing hardware now for I don't know, four years or so. And uh, it was producing for a long time before that, but I was never using these machines as a, as instruments to play live. I was using them to write music on. And since I came into this, one of the things I really have loved is how everybody's uh, way of doing it is totally different. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Do you ever watch uh, the channel for Miles Kundra? Yeah, yeah, I like so Miles. I'm, a, Miles, I'm on his Patreon. If you ever look at the way he builds tracks, it, he likes to do them on the digitone, and it's cool because he'll have um, on on the top row of his sequencer is all of the different sections, and then everything, oops, everything that's catty cornered to it is a transitional pattern to the next one, which I think is super clever. Yeah. And I, I was like, wow, how did you think of that? Because <laughs> like that's I would have never thought of that. And I think we all do that. We get inspired by the these instruments and go, oh well, I want it to do this. Oh, cool. And then I'm gonna do it this way. And yeah. it just makes it super. I was fun. thinking uh, an idea I had once is kind of similar to what Miles is doing. You just reminded me of it, was like having it be like the top row being like these being identical patterns, but variations of the patterns. Mm -hmm. And so I can be like, or oh, on pattern two, but I can also be on pattern ten 
which is a variation of pattern two. Yep. I've actually seen that on uh, DigiTac before, where one through four were variations of the same pattern, five through eight were variations of the same pattern. So you could have like basically four sections of your song and each section has variations and you can move around within them. So you can kind of remix your own track while you're doing it. Yeah. which I thought was super cool as well. Like I, I love, I, I watch a ton of videos of other people because I love to get inspired by the clever ways they've come up with to use their gear. Yeah, and yeah. Like, Man, I never thought Nothing of that. Nothing is that's original. So cool. You know what I mean? Like yeah. we're all borrowing from each other. That's that's like what's so great about this. Hi, Kinga. <laughs> you there for the Easy Buttons <laughs> prop arc. <laughs> awesome. I am too. I want to see that. That will be awesome because I'm also, I, I mentioned this to Matt before we started that, um, that, he writes very quickly, you know, like when you watch these videos, he's, he's improvising, like he's writing stuff on the fly. The only difference is at the end, he saves it so that he can do recreate that thing a second time. But if you just didn't do the save part and you just did that in <laughs> front of people, it. you do it. I mean, you're very quick at it, which is, is, I mean, it, it's basically the same thing that I do. It's just, I don't save it at the end. You save it, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so Anyway, um, just to show you a little bit about how I'm using this. So the the um, syntax, like I said, this is eight channels of what I have in here now. It's, there's no sequences at all. So like if you go here and see, they're all just kind of blank. And what's in here right now is eight sounds that I sound designed in a in a session and like oh that sounds kind of cool that sounds kind of techno. I'm gonna use that, but they're all flexible and I can use them. Um, and and move them around during the setup. So that's for everything kind of melodic that's coming from this side. And then over here, everything is drums, obviously. And I have this set up so that one is always a kick and it's always kind of like the, the, the kind of kick, like just kick, kind of a dry kick. And then we were talking about rumbles on five and six. I always have two different variations of rumbles that will go with that, so. So it gives it a different sound if I go from one to the other. Okay, now, this is this part is so cool, and I like I'm really fascinated by rumble bass. I did a tutorial on how to do rumble bass on the Octatrack. Um, I'm sure it's vastly different than how you're doing mm -hmm. it because the Octatrack I was doing resampling and stuff. Yeah. So I would love. Uh, if it's a short tutorial, yeah, I'm very curious. How do you make your rumble bass? It's it's actually way simpler than you would think, okay. because what you were doing and what most people do when you're when you're in kind of production mode making a rumble bass is you're you're taking the original kick sound and you're affecting it to make the rumble, and then most of the time you'll side chain it so it ducks out of the way of the original kick, and then you've got just the the delay reverb sound yeah yeah, and like yeah. what i produce i'll send to a delay and a reverb and that was good that's kind of like the normal way that i would produce it but on this one of the things i wanted again in order to be able to improvise i wanted to be able to have control over the rumble separate from the kick and like when you do that using effects you're like micro moving parameters of effects and it's really hard so this is actually way simpler so if you go to the kick track Right here, I have basically a four on the floor kick with a note that happens on the fourth of every floor. Little variation. Yeah, okay. just like, it up. and that's my kind of, that's the yeah. kick, right? Then if you go to the rumble track, you'll notice this is getting out of the way of the kick, even though there's a reverb there, it's ducking the volume on those things. So it's kind of like the the, the janky version of a side chain because it won't side chain. Um, so, that's what those things are. But what these all are is basically just a sequenced rumble. So it's a separate kick sound. It's not even the same kick sound. It's different kick sounds. And if you look at parameters, you'll have like, for example, the velocity of this one is 64. This one is whatever that is. Whatever that is. And this one's 84. So it goes lower, higher, medium. So you get that kind of offbeat da, da, bounce da, 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 to the da, da, yeah. to the kick. So if you hear, you know, if you just hear just the rumble without the kick, you get the you get the bounce that goes along with the rumble that normally you're getting from a delay plus a reverb. I mean, obviously there's a big reverb on there too, yeah. but you're getting it from a, a sequence rather than delaying the original kick sound. So That's it gives totally you way more control than, uh, over it. than I would have thought. Cause and I, cause the original way you talk about the production way that is, cause I'm like, as you know, not a techno savant over here. 
<laughs> but yeah, I'm very interested in, in product techno production. Mm -hmm. And uh, I always would think like it has to be, there's like, I try and follow this, the, the rules, you know, as much as I break them all the time. Like I'm trying. So techno is the punk of electronic music. There are no rules. Break the rules, do whatever you want. It's yeah, do, do whatever. The, the, the only rule for me personally in techno is that if it sounds good, it's good. That's it. There's no other rule. And I, you know, for, for example, you'll hear when you plug in my modular, you'll be like, what the hell is that noise? My modular case is so loud. Like the noise floor is yeah, but you don't care awful. At all. I couldn't care less because if I had a clean sound, I'd have to add modules to dirty it up because I like that. I like that kind of messiness because for me, that's techno. I mean, if, if you go back to kind of the roots of techno and in, 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 you know, in Detroit, it was the sounds of the factories in Detroit. Like that was the, the, the motivation for people to create techno was that kind of industrial machinery sound. That's not clean, like super EQ'd, whatever, like, yeah. it's just not about that. It's about making cool sounds. And if it sounds cool, it's cool. That's it. Like I that's, it. that's the I only it. rule. That's good advice. That's good advice. I yeah. like it. Man, you get way more action on your chat than I do. What's up, chat? <laughs> when, when I do streams, it's like, I'll get like a couple questions. Yours is like, People are just honed in on what you're saying in your <laughs> mind. They're just aimlessly chewing on stuff. <laughs> nice. I don't know. I'm glad everybody's here hanging out with uh, with Eric, a.k.a. Circo, here with me, because it's, it's a real honor. Eric flew up to play a show. Um, and he's taught me so much already about some cool techno stuff and giving me all these reasons to rethink why I let go of my oxy. I, I don't even want to get into it. It might makes my heart, my heart beat too hard, <laughs> but, um, no, I'm excited. Like, uh, yeah. So uh, about this techno rumble yeah. thing. You, so these are all kicks and what, what do you have parameter locked here? Just a volume dip. Um, so yeah, it's basically just, uh, velocity. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay. Just velocity. And then you so, have two versions of this. Yeah. So that's the other thing that I do um, in kind of to have some flexibility when I perform. And I'll show you a little bit more about how I use it in a minute. But it, when you're kind of playing along, you've got your kind of clean kick and then you can add one rumble and that gives you one vibe. And then you can take that one off and add a different one. And that gives you a different vibe. Um, different kicks that are used and stuff, but kind of similar method. But the other thing with this too, and the reason why I use the two separately is so that now if I go into this track that just has the rumble and I adjust the filter on the rumble, you can build that. I can make it be a bass you could go if I want. At yeah. The same time. Right. You can use it as effects or you can change it or can bring it way down and have it be super subby. So it's almost like you've got an infinite number of kicks that you can use because I can also change up my kick. Just like the the, the core kick that we have, you know, I can make it, make it more overdrived and crunched. I can um, make it be, you know, I've got, this is kind of a, a combination of a sample and, a, and another one that I can bring in a sample. Right, make it super grimy if you want to. So there's a lot of flexibility in this method to be able to control it. And one of the reasons for that is, again, like I mentioned, when I perform, I'm improvising. So if I want to hear, a, you know, it, like this goes back to I DJed for like more than 20 years. And so I've got a, kind of my ear goes to like, okay, well, I think the crowd wants this. Now, what song would I find? Well, what's different about this is it's like, okay, well, I want some variation. So I want to bring in a new song so I can do a new song by modifying the drums and changing and bringing in a different melodic element. And it's a new song. I don't have to worry about here's song A, how do I transition to song B? Mm -hmm. I'm bringing across individual instruments. What about tempo? Um, Again, master tempo. Are you tempo? adjusting your tempo? Are you stick like, okay, so this is actually a decent tempo. <laughs> a lot of people stick with the tempo. They're like, people ask me all the time. They go, all right, you're playing a set. What tempo are you playing? And I'm like, all of them. <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean? I'm playing any tempo I want. I'm Some songs are, I have an 110 BPM. I got 178 BPM track. Right. You know, like they're, they're all over the place. It's just my music. Um, is that how you do it? Uh not really, because, you know, again, this kind of goes back to the DJ mentality of, for me, a lot of times you're playing a club night where the idea is to kind of build over the course of the night and not have each set be all of the music. 
you've got you know you might have a you might have a, a dub techno person at the beginning and then you might have kind of more of a kind of a tech housey something mm-hmm. and then you might have somebody that goes into more or whatever so you're you're kind of playing your slot that's and, kind of that's strange because that's yeah. like uh so for me like i will arrange my set the way a club arranges the performers right and so that's something that you know when you, you talk about techno in general like what is techno one of the things for me is that's that makes techno different from a lot of other genres of music is for me techno is kind of like the soundtrack of the whole evening whereas with a lot of other genres of music whether it's you know other kinds of electronica or whether it's house or whether it's whatever you it's more about song after song after song like oh i know this one like yeah, that's yeah, my yeah. jam i'm yeah, going to yeah. sing along with that yeah. you know Which and is so, kind of how i kind of how i go too right yeah. and so that that goes to me more to kind of like the 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 radio idea of like oh your song comes on you turn it up you're excited well in a club if if you're playing house music or if you're playing you know like more top 40 music a song comes on you like you're going to run out on the dance floor and jam out because that's your song that you like where with techno it's not about like i like this song i don't like this song i like this one i don't like this one it's about it's kind of like a movie soundtrack for your whole rave or your whole party night or it's more like i like night. this artist yeah or this vibe that they right, make right. i like the vibe that they do yep, okay exactly exactly okay <laughs> trying to see like what's on the line yeah there's hella <laughs> chat going on <laughs> and yeah we still say hella Okay, that's still a thing. Uh, Charles Bronson wants to know, does your rumble on the rhythm have a delay or just using velocity? Uh, yes, it does. So if we go here, I mean, if you, I don't know how well you can see the parameters here, but there's a lot of reverb and a little delay. So if you were to listen to this one, that's just that. If I took the delay off, you really hear the What's your the delay sent part? to? What's I the mean, time on your delay? 48? I don't remember. Is it still a triple at eighth notes? Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. So it's eighth triplets. So it gives you that same kind of that kind of like like galloping rhythm. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. That makes it sound like like you would if you you were doing it in that production method. The only difference here is you sequence it in rather than having right. it always be affected that's by right, the, that's right. That's right. Because you're using the, the sequencer. One. Yeah, so that's that that helps you as well because you you know with the sequencer you're getting the the, the kind of gallop as well right. by by sequencing that in with with different amounts of rhythm. So yeah, take me to techno te- technoville. So um, just to show you other, a couple of other things that I use the rhythm for. So I've got um, so these are always kicks and rumbles in these areas. So the like two different rumbles here. And then all across the top, I have uh, my symbols. So I've got a like a, a regular kind of 16th hat with a little bit of variation in like it. A, so it, gives it. It's an LFO on the. the there might pitch. be. There might be. Bit. Yeah, and it's and it's really um, it, it's really about kind of giving it again that that kind of like you know t- techno is really for me about kind of hypnotic rhythms and then you create some tension whether it's dissonant tension whether it's with weird rhythms whether it's with you know polymeters whether whatever it is you're creating things that don't sound quite right so that you can then drop back into a groove that sounds right and get everybody to keep going yeah. that happens with all of this and then you you know you want to you clean this up a little bit you might yes i do mean in. dotted eighth notes thank yes. you um, so something that kind of helps keep time as well. So you've got push pull of rhythm, but things that are keeping time. Now with these symbols, one of the things that I was mentioning to Matthew before, the thing, reason why I'm using the rhythm now um, and not the detact anymore is because with this, I can layer synth and symbol. So on this track, this that you're listening to right now, actually, this is just synth. So this is just a symbol drum synth. So I can add decay you know i can change the tuning change the tuning i can change you know the tone i can do all different things with the synth part but i also have an open hat sample um layered on that but if you go to the sample page it's at zero volume oh so you're gonna bring it and because i want to use this symbol for a while but if i'm cruising along and i've got this sound going and i'm like okay that's cool but now i want to look i want a little more energy like i want to bring up the energy in the room i'm going to layer in that other symbol so listen 
yeah, yeah, so it's really it, good. And all of a sudden you're like, oh, there's, there's more yeah. stuff going on. And you, like, you get all excited. And that's yeah. the whole thing is about kind of creating that excitement with this. Then I've got, you know, as I mentioned, I've got these, these 16th hats here. Um, but then on this side, I've also got another 16th note pattern that's not always hats. So a lot of times I can think this one's like a wood blocky thing. So you get that same kind of driving thing, kind of like chugging along on a train, whatever. And so that gives you, and then you can switch up the... Mind you, we don't have any syntax happening yet, right? No, that's just these four drums. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah, yeah. I mean, it sounds and, full. Well, and that's the, that's a big part of this is that the everything is kind of foundationally made around the grooves that are here. Right. And then you create, like you make that into a track by adding in some melodic stuff, which I'll show now how I'm doing that stuff. Cool segue. Yeah. <laughs> right? So again, eight channels going to here. So if we're on track one, that's track one here. That's why I have it marked so I can see it in a dark room. Um, one of the things that I love about the Oxy is that if I'm on track one, I can go in here and this line is now a Euclidean sequencer. So if you don't know what a Euclidean sequencer is, it's based off of Euclidean math. So what it will do is it will take a certain number of steps, however many you say. So like if you did this as, you know, I'm gonna take this back down to zero. So like, let's say right now it's at 16 steps long, but there's no um, pulses in that. Now, if I start to add them, if I add one, it puts it on one. If I add two, it will space them out evenly between 16 steps. So you'll get a two and an eight, right? So you've got two evenly spaced out. But then if you have an odd number, it can't evenly space out in an odd number of steps. Right. So then all of a sudden you get these kind of off rhythms. And you can also change the length too. Right, so, so that's at, that at 16 steps, more. right. So this is at 16 steps, but then if I go down to 15, now it can evenly space them because right. three and 15 if, is, are, if, right, is, right, are right. multiples, right? So it will work. But then if I go to an even number, 14, then they're not evenly spaced anymore. Where, so where it's at is to always keep these at all. Yeah, so yeah exactly. Other. Even <laughs> odd or odd even, yeah. always. Um, or I've found I really enjoy odd odd in certain combinations. So one of my favorites that I use a lot is I'll go to 12 as my length because that keeps it in, in a 16 bar sequence. 12 will line up every four times. Keeps it polymeter. Three times. Right, exactly. And so um, it will give it this kind of odd repeat. So you'll get that, but if you now add a kick to that, so you get that, they go together. So that's 12 and three, but I like 12 and five or 12 and seven. So if you go to five. And now you can do your- Super cool thing. Right, so that's the first melody. part. That's giving me just the gate. So for those of you who are modular folks, um, gate is the on and off of the note. CV is the, used for the pitch of the note. Um, of what the note actually is. So these are just gates really that are going into my, you know, this is in Phrygian E2. So that's an E2. And it's just doing that without any kind of note variation. But if I then go into this kind of random generator, this can generate gates and pitch, or if you turn this all the way down past zero, so like if you were to go at 67% and hit this button, it'll put notes and gates 67% of the steps, right? So if you, but if you then take this down past zero, it goes to pitch, then what it's doing, I'm gonna put my steps back in here. Um, it goes down to just pitch. So now if I press this, it generates a random pitch on every single step, even where there's not an, a, a gate, the, the notes are there waiting for a gate. Right, and they're all in Phrygian. And you can e. always just generate new pitch too. Sure, and so these are all. There's notes waiting there in Phrygian E. So if I go back here and I take these all away and I push play, right now there's nothing. But if I start to add pulses, that was whatever the random note was that was put there. And if I add two, and they're going to stay in that key. And if I go up back up to the five that I like. And so all of a sudden you've got this really cool rhythm and melody, <laughs> it's cl as close as you're ever gonna hear me do a melody, um, in something that's building off of this foundation of drums. So again, we've got kind of our, um, mess with this just a little bit. To 
and then you can do other stuff with your drums. So we can go back in. And then we've got Matt's amazing effects up here. So then let's say you want to do something really simple, like just high pass this. Because you want to add in an open hat, but you don't want to just add in an open hat because that's right. awkward. So you want to filter this up, and then when you drop this back down, you, then you add in your open hat. And now it's techno. Okay, we're done. See ya. And now, techno. <laughs> and now, that's it. now we're done. See you and later. Bye. So where this gets really interesting now is now we have one melodic thing that's in a key. Now if I go to a different random thing, so if I go to track five, I don't even know what's on track five. Um, if I go to a different one and I create now a new pattern on this one that has zero pulses, but let's do this one short. So let's do five. So it's gonna repeat every five steps. So they'll line up sometimes, they'll go out of whack sometimes. So now I'll start adding notes in here. And then you get this kind of cool group and it makes you want to dance. Yeah, like, yeah, that's yeah. the best thing about this. Is it's, techno is very primal. Like it just makes you want to groove. So then you add something else. So this actually brings me to a point. So this just popped in my head as you were doing all this and you were like, and we were like, done, techno's done. That like, it, it brought me to this this spot where I was like, this isn't, this is about, for one, your skill level. Like you're clearly, you have skills, but not just that, you built a workflow and it's all like, and I, it's for me, I love what I do because I love my workflow and it works yep. for what I do. I love your workflow. It's so interesting to me, but it's like, we're not sitting here dialing in compressors and EQs and doing all this stuff like trying no. to go nuts. Like right now it's all about how do I play these machines, which also goes back to our original point that you talked about with like, are you playing something? It's like, absolutely. Totally. Are we playing something? Yeah, we're playing these machines like very well right. because you know them as, so well. as an instrument. And for me, yeah. this is an instrument. Yes. This, this is whole one, thing is one instrument. This is techno. Right. <laughs> but no, it's like it's learning how to to put these pieces together and how you created this these cons you took these ideas and you fit them into these boxes. Yeah. Like the boxes that helped you generate the ideas, of course, but mm -hmm. you had an idea and you made these form to you. Well and and the idea <coughs> sorry. The idea for me was kind of controlled chaos. I like the randomness but I also want to be able to control it. So if I want to change the sound, I need to know where that sound is and how to change it. I don't just want to use sample, like you know that I'm not a huge sample guy because I don't like to organize sample folders. Like it's, I have a pet peeve. Yeah, you just want to play. Yeah, and, and so the thing is, I much prefer a synth workflow to a sample workflow because when I want a sound, I can make it way faster than I can find it in a folder somewhere. Right. So I like to just be able to kind of dial that in and fix and make it. You also that have sound. more control over changing the sound later. Totally, and you know what's cool about this, like, like this is a great example. You talk about control and, you know, I, I hear a lot about um, transitions. I get asked a lot about transitions and how to do them. I'm like, I have no idea. Like, I, I don't do them. So I, I couldn't teach anyone how to do it because that's not how my workflow works. I'll send them your way because you know how to do it and you do it really well. But with this, I'm, I'm going to transition instrument by instrument. So like, let's say we're grooving along. This is our kind of techno track that we're that we're digging on. And then I might want to kind of change this up and do a break. And then I might go to this particular instrument and maybe I'll extend it up. And extend out the, the decay. So I've got a different sound. And then I might filter it down. And then I might bring in a different kick with a different rumble. And then if I want, I can go to my other instrument that I was working with here, and I can then change this one.
change that up and you know we're we're working on creating a new song now right from what we had to start off with now i can go back to that track and i can change up my number of pulses right so i can make this now let's say 11. Now we're at a totally different place than we were a minute ago. Yeah. But it wasn't because we had prepared this and started off with something else and moved to this. We shifted over bit by bit. Now we can go into, you know, a different, um, say a different track here, pick some random thing here. So then I can again build my 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 rhythm. Like let's go to a my 12 and 5 that I like. Well, that sound. This one, the, the, that kind of, this one I wasn't digging on too much anymore, so I'm gonna take that back down. Yeah, I like where we're at now, this is cool. Look at that resonance. Yeah. Oh shit, right there. One thing I like about using the resonant peak, especially with stuff like this, it's kind of like tonal percussion, yeah. is that when you move it, it sounds like a different sound. Yeah. Okay. I got another point. Time for time for Matt to butt in. Okay, so the way that you're using this, and this just mm -hmm. kind of popped in my head. So I talked to, when I do like Octatrack lessons and stuff, and I'm like talking to people about parts. I'm yeah. trying to explain parts to people. This is usually a, a hiccup for a lot of folks. Mm -hmm. You know, temporarily we solve it pretty quick. But the the syntax has a part, right? Each pattern has a track. Each pattern is a, its own part. If you looked at like the Octatrack mm -hmm. pattern, is a part. So for you you could essentially and maybe this is what you're doing i'm kind of guessing this is where i'm going is to mm -hmm. see if you do this you can go to pattern two with nothing on the pattern except for it's a whole new bank of sounds that you've designed yes i, that's, I that's the terms doing? i use are very different okay so for me i'll put them into the terms of this for me every pattern is a kit okay and it's yeah. just a kit of sounds got it and then i sequence those sounds okay. from here i feel like but... i feel like i've totally i totally now grokked <laughs> your like, whole oh, thing I get it like i totally get what you're trying yeah. to do here and that's that's kind of why it was the the idea of doing this was super fun because i'm like oh yeah because you know these machines really well i mentioned to matt when we were first talking about this earlier saying that how cool it would be um when we have some more time where he sits down with my thing and just plays stuff and i sit down with his gear and just play stuff because it would sound really different from what we eat do but we know our way around the gear well enough that we could yeah and just kind of be like oh yeah that's kind of cool yeah, well, because like again. because right now the the way uh the the way this is being used so if i was to mute this here like i could still go in and if i wanted to i could still go in and start sequencing stuff on here right and have it still be like what you I actually to. like that idea like the idea of like being able to do both, like that you're sequencing this. I used to do this thing with uh, the deluge mm -hmm. where my dig attack was like out of the picture and I had patterns built on the dig attack, but you didn't hear them play. They were all fill condition patterns. Right. And so anytime I needed a drum fill, but the deluge was playing the dig attacks drums, similar workflow to this. And I would just hit the fill button. You could also do that here too. Like yep. I have a track that's your fill track and brrr, something like that would be cool. Yep. Um, I don't know. <laughs> um, the other thing that I figured out, I think we talked about this the other day when we were just randomly talking about stuff, but with this, um, on these, on this track that doesn't have anything on it, if you were to put just a, um, a conditional trigger, I mean, sorry, a trigless trig on this, there's nothing playing yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Now I can parameter lock stuff to this. Right, like, yeah. And then hold it down and hit yes. I'm not on the right track. Let's review it. <laughs> so if I create this, now I can... 
I can parameter lock all this stuff to this. And then as soon as I let it off, it goes back to my old sound. That's pretty cool. And so then you're like, and then you can bring it back in and take yeah, it out, which I, I think is a super random thing. The only thing that's bad is if you touch it, it's gone. And you're yeah, like, oh shit, like, I lost all my stuff. Do it again stuff. from scratch, right? If you don't, right. if you go with your mindset and we, you don't prepare it, yeah. you just, maybe you prepare that one track with the drum fill. I think that would be a good idea. That's so I, I, I do that here, okay. actually. It's fine. I don't have that, like, um, my two is always like a, a clapper or snare. And I've, I've got like, that's my one fill of what about risers? I use all the time. Do you use noise at all? Do you use risers for? Just from your template. Oh, just from the, okay, <laughs> got it. Yeah, so like, I'll be cruising along with something like this. This is totally and my then, kind of techno right here. Like, I, I love I love the, the off rhythms. That's kind of what makes me jam, right? But then I'll use the circle riser, because I love it. next part yeah, right yeah, yeah. and it's like that i mentioned to you before and it wasn't just blowing smoke your template totally changed the way i viewed live performance because as a dj i wanted it to be as you said a few times i wanted it to sound like as good as a dj set as smooth as a dj set and without these effects you couldn't really make it do that yeah, yeah. you Songs know and you would get dead yeah it was bit. like and it always sounds like kind of jerky and clunky because you're like just muting and unmuting stuff and it's yeah. this awkward way to bring things in and out and all of a sudden it's like this is the way i would produce and the way i would dj because like think about when you're producing a song and i'm sure it's the same no matter the genre right so you 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 write your song and then when you get into that kind of arrangement phase everything you're doing is about adding automation and changing things and filtering things in to end this break and you know adding a little drop out of the kick before you add in your new hi-hat or whatever it is and it's really clunky to do that without this and as soon as you have this template it's like oh now i have all those things that's cool now i can just do them however I want. And you can adjust them to your taste. Correct. Well, and I did. Right. <laughs> Just yeah. reset. So like, for example, um, this one, it, this is a great example because that's using the this riser, um, the, the circle riser. I love that when you would get done with this and you could like it, let it off. You have the delay kind of like da -da 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 -da, and it just kind of fades out. Yeah, I feel like that was literally an accident that yeah. it's not working that way currently because that yeah. is how it did before. And it's yeah, supposed to be I, the same effect. I, I love it. I mean, I, I I love that, and I and I use this a lot too. This this resonant high pass with the with yeah. the reverb, and then just bringing it. just as a way because because it's great because it takes out your kick, but you've still got the click keeping time. So it's kind of still doing something, and then you can bring in something new. You know? And then, you know, we can go back into these things. You know, we can go back into, you know, an individual channel. Um, and then you can start to mess around. As you've seen, and as everybody watching has seen, like all this you can do on the fly. You don't have to. You like, did prepare all the music. Prepare, well, I mean, the I mean, sounds. you prepared all the sounds. Right. The sound and, design. And, and that's prepared. something you and I have talked about before when we were talking about, you know, kind of what is techno. Yeah. It's, it's this kind of primal groove and it's sound design. Right. Like, that's it <laughs> in a nutshell, that's, really. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Because like it's that. like a lot of the music you like to write, you mentioned because of your singer songwriter background, you like to write melodies and counter melodies and have things kind of play off of each other and, and key changes and things like that. Those are defining elements of certain styles of music. With techno, it's really about the sound design. You know, it's like, like a singer songwriter can play the exact same guitar for an entire hour long set. Yeah. And you're not really sound designing. It's still that same, you know, 
Martin guitar or whatever. It's like, you, you, you're you not changing up the sound. Somebody told me the other day, like we were talking about doing different kicks. They were like, the Rolling Stones didn't change their kick drum between songs. Like it was the same kick for the whole concert because that's not what their music was about. It's not about sound design. It's about melody and lyric right. and things well, like that. Well, the drummer is his own thing. Like, right. like it, in the Rolling Stones, the drummer can't change his kick for one that's impractical unless it's an electronic right. kit. But also... The drummer in the band is the drummer and that's his kit and that's what he does which is and i look at it like this yeah. is the drummer yeah yeah this and is so the that's drummer, why and the drummer like, can do like anything. here's an example for you too with this so if we're kind of cruising along with these sounds if i was to go in and change kits oops, and i move to a different kit you'll notice this kick when i load a new kick it's pretty similar because it's basically the same kick from one thing to the next. I've changed some very subtle parameters, but I haven't changed the kick. Even though when we change it, if this, this may be a different thing. I like that sound. Right, and then if I go to a new kit, that sound's gonna change completely. Or maybe not so much. <laughs> So it's like, and it's the same, well, one thing that I love about the rhythm, and um, again, the, my two favorite drum machines are this and the Percons, and the reason being they both do the same thing. The, the patterns in the kits are saved separately. So that was the exact same pattern with just different kits being dropped on top of it. Then if I want, I can go to a different pattern and it's playing something totally different on that. So that was just what was playing just on that note because of that pattern. It was, yeah, it was something with a huge delay on it, I guess. But you get like this pattern will be on this one. And then if you switch to a new pattern, it's a different sound and it's a different, um, a different rhythm. But then you can go in and actually just lay a kick, a kit over the top of it. It's a different kit. And it keeps the same pattern, but it puts that different kit of songs that are in those different places. This is why so, it's super so handy. nice. The Mark IIs, like the whole Mark II electron workflow, like this is a conversation I have all the time with mm. folks. And I, cause I'm often arguing against what you're doing. Uh, you know what <laughs> I mean? Like I'm are. usually telling folks, I'm like, yo, like the Diggy devices, they have pattern mutes. They have this kind of like, you can, cause I'm thinking how I think, you yep. know? Um, and a lot of people that are approaching me, they're like, they're wanting to know how to do what I'm doing. Uh, but I also want to show people how to do what you're doing, uh, cause it's so cool and mm -hmm. it's really fun to, <laughs> to improvise, but that the disconnected sequencer and kits is something the Octatrack does. And that is why the template works. Yeah. So it's something I do love mm -hmm. because the template in that be, context, in that context. Right. <laughs> yeah. But I, I do, I have like that multi drum machine. Thing. I don't know if you ever saw that video, but I made a video where I was like 606, 707, 808, 909 on four different parts, but the pattern stays the same. Right. So you could keep just switching out drum kits. I mean, you only get four of them on the ox track. On the rhythm, you could do that same thing, but you get 127. Right. 128. Yeah. 128 kits. Total. Yeah. And then you've got, and again, you, you think about the, the infinite possibilities for mixing and matching to improvise live. You've got 128 kits, and then you've got um, eight banks of 16 patterns per bank. Right, so you've got this kind of crazy, I don't even know what that is, 128 times 128, gives you this kind of crazy number of possible combinations of things that you can do, and that's just this piece, <laughs> right? And then you've got, you know, these crazy infinite inter interplaying rhythms with Euclidean sequencers and stuff. So you, the, the, the improvisational possibilities are crazy. That's why when we were laughing that like earlier about how long you play, like, if you tell me tomorrow I need to play for six hours, I can play for six hours because I'm just going to be doing this stuff. I'm going to be yeah, yeah, yeah. coming up with new things and doing different parts. Now, um, for those of you who've been listening to what we've been doing so far, six hours of this would come off boring, but there's ways that you can then, you know, play the sequencers as well. So like if we're doing like with the, um, if we have our, our kit, 
hit or kick doing this and then you go into here you can actually change this up pretty easily into something broken right and then you can have a, a broken beat of what you're doing right and then you can pretty easily go back to you could have used pattern mutes too like you could have a broken right. beat in there pre-programmed and sure. then change the pattern mutes or you can have a pattern that has a broken beat on you it and go to that and do the <laughs> exactly do the direct start or yep. direct jump yep exactly and so there's a lot of different ways that you can again play the sequencer like an instrument and it's yep. not just like okay i'm going to put in this pattern and then i'm stuck i'm locked into that it's like no, I can I can change this up. I can I can make this a broken beat pretty easily. Question: Have you looked up the CC message to send a trigger into the effects track on your syntax? No, because you should. Because okay. if you do, you can make another sequencer that sequences sidechain. Oh, that's a good idea. And you could sidechain all your synth effects, or choose which one. So you could have like a pad to yang yang if something. I don't know. I would do a pad because I like pretty stuff. <laughs> You would do. <laughs> I would do something dissonant. You might and do something more uncomfortable. Yeah, something that makes. Right. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, I think that would be really cool. <clears throat> just to add, add a little flavor. Yeah, agreed. I was just looking. This is just like. Brrr. Yeah, there's some definitely some chat going on here. Wow. LXRO2 is another more affordable drum machine that has disconnected patterns. Yes. It's, yeah, it's a, that it's a, a very one. cool drum machine. It's a cool drum machine and it's a cool module for modular. I know I really wanted that module. <laughs> it's really cool. But then I got the assimilator and now I'm like, yeah, I just don't want to spend any more money on. Yeah, I get that. That, you know, when I, when I first started doing modular, which was very recently, like within the last year, the, the thing that really attracted me and it kind of opened my mind to even a lot of what I'm doing in this non-modular part of the setup is the idea of separating gate and CV. Because I had always kind of been in this mindset that like, okay, the trigger or the key on the keyboard is the on off and the tone. And it's like, it's, it, you know, for me, it, it just changed my world when I was like, what do you mean they don't have to be linked? What do you mean I can have all those triggers here, all those notes here waiting for a gate? Like that's the coolest thing ever. Yeah. And it just blew my mind. And now I bring that into sequencing these machines and I bring it into the kit idea just because it, it it's it, it just opens up so many more possibilities with really kind of a limited um you don't need as much stuff to do this crazy amount of possibilities no like this i mean this is like not cheap right these are these are yeah. expensive pieces of kit yeah. but this is something you can accrue over time you could mm -hmm. even just start with the rhythm or just the syntax mm -hmm. and do what you're doing sure for the most part especially the rhythm harder on the syntax but like the rhythm very much so or the octatrack but all these kits, they all, like this has the best of of the new the new and the old Electron workflow. Yep. But adding this to your workflow, I feel like this is a this is this is a pretty sick. It's crazy, right? Combo, it, it, and it's like we were talking about this before. Matt and I both get accused of being Electron fanboys because like all of our setups have so much Electron gear, and it's really because it's the best of what it does. And when this came out, the reason I got this is because it does what it does better than what than this does. Did it. you try the torso? I did. I messed around with it a little. I haven't. It's very one. similar to what you're doing. Yeah. And if I'm if I'm not wrong, I think the guy who who made this has a torso and was like that was kind of an inspirational device for him right. um, doing this. But um, what's what's really different with this is just the amount of flexibility. So we've been looking at just these kind of single track kind of 16 steps, which you can take out to 64. Um, but and you can actually go to 128. But there's all kinds of other sequencers on here. So like for the coral, I have this one, which is called a matricial sequencer. So each one of these blocks is, a, is so the sequence is four different uh, voices. And when you kind of push play on this one, I'm just gonna mute that so you can just watch it. So you can see this is going through the sequence of 16 steps <laughs> and you've got, this so is- pretty. Yeah, isn't it? So you, this is your kind of trigger. So you can sequence, you can put in triggers where you oh, want them. It, this is note. So you can go in here and parameter lock a note. Even if there's not a trigger, it'll change the notes after it until you change another one back. Okay. You have an interval. So you can set just an interval between them. You got velocity, you got an octave. So you can do octave jumps, kind of like a 303 sequencer. Um, you've got a re-trigger, so you can do, you know, lambs and stuff like that. I remember when they added the matricial 
but uh, whatever, however you yeah. say it, sequencer to the Oxygen one, because I had the not black version, because this is so <laughs> cool looking. This is the techno version. Yeah, this is the techno. <laughs> I had the, the whatever version. <laughs> Uh, then they added that sequencer. I, did, I didn't even try it. Yeah. It's, it took me a while to try it because I was kind of intimidated. But now then when I realized that this was kind well, this of like, intimidating. this was the menu. And I was like, oh, I get that. Like, I want to change the trigger. I want to change the note. And th another thing that they do, like their, their user interface is pretty cool. So like you see where the triggers are here. If I go to the note mode, it shows me where the notes change. But if I hit it again, it shows me where my triggers are. So if I'm like, I want to change a note on this, I can just go back and change that note. Wait, so this right here. Mm -hmm. Is this same sequencer? Yeah, so this is the menu for this 16 oh. steps. This is the menu for this 16 steps. Oh, this is the menu. I had it. no idea. And, I thought this was a seven, and separate this, sequencer. This is even great too. This is the mute. Oh. So I can well, touch any really, of these. This and that, looks really cool. It is it is super cool. Okay. I wish I had tried it out. So this, th this thing has... Uh, the mono sequencer, which is um, basically kind of like it, it makes it like a deluge where this is, you know, this is the note and this is the step. So like you put the notes, the higher up it is, the higher it is. So it's just like a deluge sequencer uh, sequencing a single voice. Then you have a poly version of that. Then you've got this multi, which I'm using here that has eight different channels per uh, sequencer. Then you have the matricial one, and then there's a couple others that I haven't even started using yet because I'm pretty sure that because the dev from Oxy just loves you. Oh yeah, I mean he and I talk all the time. <laughs> I, I did so when I went to Super Booth in Berlin, I went to uh, work some stuff in their booth. So I did demos in their booth, and then we did you know the people that do the books books. Bajukes. Bajukes. Yeah. <laughs> they um they had a booth where they had some demos and and talks. So I demoed this while Manuel talked. Oh, the guy cool. who was the designer of this. Oh, so cool. we did a whole yeah, yeah. a whole bunch of things at Super Booth together. He's so active. Together. He's super he's kind. such a nice guy he's, too. He is really cool. And he's really you know it's funny. I was talking with Travarsi recently because she's using this now too. And and we were both talking about how if you come up with an idea and you just kind of chuck it out there and like, hey Manuel, it would be cool if it did this. Like an hour later, he'll send you a message. You oh, go, no, he's, here, download this file. It does it now. He did like, that with me. How do you I do had that? It, I was all up in his business. I was like, this isn't doing this. <laughs> That's right. This isn't doing this. This is buggy, blah, blah, blah. Because it just come out. It was just, yeah. it was so fresh. And I bought it immediately because I was like, because it is what it is. Like, it's yeah. a really cool thing. I got turned off because I'm a, I'm a freak. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, when I, when I asked him to do some stuff, it was like, he really did implement stuff I mentioned yep. immediately. Exactly. Which was, yeah, really yeah, cool. The other thing that I find with him too, is I'll be like, hey, it would be great if it did this. And like 30 seconds later, he'll message me back. It does. Here's how you do it. I'm like. Okay. You're of course, like, he's of like, course it cool. does. Of course it does. How dare you? <laughs> of course it already does everything you want. Um, <laughs> I made it for you. Like Eric. I had somebody ask me and I didn't know the answer. So I sent the message to him. They were saying like, cause you know, you can record in manually. You don't have to sequence in by step. You can record in just like you can on any sequencer. And um, they were asking, can you quantize after it's recorded in? Because you can set quantize parameters. So as you're recording in, it will quantize it. But they wanted to put something in and then quantize it afterwards. And I was like, hey, you know, somebody mentioned this. And he's like, oh, it does that. Here's how you do it. And he oh, gave cool. me like the key combo. And I was like, oh, nice. He gave you the keys. Yeah, the keys to the castle. The keys to the, the quantize castle. Quantize yep. castles, that's our new techno name. <laughs> exactly. So anyway... This is kind of how this setup works. I can show a little bit more or yeah, yeah, yeah. questions gonna, or if we want to go to yeah, the if chat. You wanna, or... If you want to say hi to the, say hello to the chat. There's people, uh, everybody's just saying how. Modular is a frame of mind as much as anything. Yes, it is. Modular and the rhythm. I feel like the Octatrack is is close to modular and same with like the rhythm too. But I'd say the Octatrack the most is the closest thing to modular you're going to get in a single piece of hardware that's not on your computer. Yeah. I think that's one of the things that makes the Octa Track really special is that, you know, with modular, your setup is flexible. You can change it from day to day, what it does and how it's wired and mm -hmm. what goes through where. And you can do that all internally with the Octa Track too, where a lot of pieces of gear, they have one workflow and you have to adapt to that workflow where the Octa Track is, you know, it's the, the cliche that it's the Swiss army knife, but it, it really is because it does like one day it can be an effects box. The next day it can be a sample chopper. The next day it can be Dude, a drum machine. The I next day it's a groove box. The next day it's a Literally take a second Octatract, as you know, with mm -hmm. the battery in it. I literally take it with me 
to work because it's like my VCA in a modular system. It right. just, it is whatever I need it to be today. Yep. Is it a mixer? Is it a sample? <coughs> is it a synthesizer? Is it an effects processor? Is it my sequencer? Is it my MIDI sequencer? You mm -hmm. know, is it my drum machine? It just does everything. It's it's still the best. Yep. I think. And, and, you know what else and I also tell people all the time, yeah, you still have to show me how to use that. I have one that's collecting dust. <laughs> um, the other thing about the track, <coughs> sorry, the other thing about the Octatrack is that there's there's machines out there that do everything the Octatrack does better than the Octatrack, each individual thing. Right. But there's nothing that does them all in one box. And do, still does it well. And still does it well. And there's also, the I think the biggest problem for people with the Octatrack is that they try to drink from the fire hose and make it do everything it can do all at once. Right. And Same you know, with modular. yeah, for sure. And I think that uh, w for me, the again, the, I use this when I talk to people about the Octa Track all the time. The analogy of the Swiss Army knife. The Swiss Army knife has like the spoon and the corkscrew and the toothpick and the knife and the scissors but you don't use them all at the same time. No, no, no. You pick one and you use that and it does it. And then you pick another one and use that and it does it. And it's the same with the Octatrack. If you're going to do, you know, sample chopping, sweet, amazing. But if you want to do sample chopping, sequence 25 pieces of gear, plus have a whole bank of effects, plus have all these things, it's like, yeah, that's going to be clunky and hard and it's not going to work the way you want it to. But if you pick any one of those things, you know, today I need a, a sample. Cool. That's also the reason why modular is such a pain in the ass is because <laughs> every time, so in the Octatrack, it's so easy to reconfigure that. Yeah. Like I can do, like I'm fast with Octatrack, right? Because I use it so much, but like I can, reconfig <laughs> I can reconfigure it pretty quickly to do what I want. In a modular system, I have to, thank God for thumb screws, I have to literally build a new system, and yep. the, which is also great, but I think it's good to get in the habit of sticking with the system like your yep. modular system doesn't change that much not much now that i have it kind of set the way i want like it, it to. does what you need it to do well and that's part of why it doesn't change a lot because i'm only using it as voices and effects i don't have any drums in there i don't have a sequencer in there i'm sequencing from the oxy i'm using this for drums so i've kind of simplified it down to where it's it's four voices and a mixer and effects Right. inside it and because of that i do change out the voices sometimes um but yeah for the most part it, it kind of stays what it is right because it now that i've found the voices that i like <laughs> there's certain voices that i really it, it's funny you'll see this tonight i caught myself doing this the other day i realize now when i'm using my modular in my live setup probably 75 percent of the time i'm either using the bia or the oxy coral yeah you really and, like the coral oh, i love it I, well, again, it, it, you'll see a common theme I mean, it because it does it because it does a ton in a small yeah. amount of space. That's kind of the thing. It's just kind of like this. It's right. an eight voice. It's like you added another. It's like, yeah, it is exactly like this. Yeah. It's like this in your modular. So you have two of these basically in your set. Yep. And I mean, when I first built my modular case where I was using the coral, I wasn't <laughs> using the syntax like this. And then I d d just decided. To, I, I, heard on? Yeah. I thought there was no drums allowed. Oh, no, there's, there's still sound. These are, this is the basic kit. Oh, yeah. 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 Do you not even using the analog engines for synth voices? Mm -hmm. No, I do sometimes, but right now I'm not. Okay. Just because one through eight and one through eight. Yeah, no, I get it. Yeah, no. kept my I mean, you have here. enough sounds. Like, now, it's not interestingly thing. enough, because this is, so the, the, the Oxy One is not, this isn't the only sequencer, right? So each one of these four is a sequencer that can each be a multi-track. So you could have this be eight tracks, eight tracks, eight right, tracks, yeah. eight tracks. You could have 32 tracks. So right now I have the syntax being sequenced by eight, but if I wanted to go to another sequencer, like a matricial one that's four, that could be sequencing my four analog voices. Right. So then I can have all 12, but I right. just don't have it set up that way. Right now, these two Cs are both set up for the coral. It's also a the, lot. Like you'd yeah. start getting into like having a bajillion voices to choose right. from. And which I you found, don't really need. Right. But. Well, one of my one of my things that I catch myself doing all the time when I play live and when I produce, again, this is a techno thing, I I I keep adding. And right. then there comes a time like too when, when I finish a track, I'll be like, okay, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and take out half of the elements. Right. Because they're just, they're, it's too much. Right. And somebody mentioned to me recently, if you're, if you're building a track and you feel like you need to add something, what you have isn't good enough. That's you're trying to make up for the deficiency of what you've already put in your track. Right. Okay. Instead of going in and going, you know what? That sounds not really that good. I'm going to fix that sound. 
you go, okay, well, if I just add this to it, it's going to be better. Right. And it, or it, it changed the way I looked at it. Getting stuck in that thing where you're getting the scope creep of having too much, uh, like you're having that paralysis, a choice paralysis. Right. Where you're getting, you have too many options. And so you keep implementing more and more stuff because you've given yourself too much to work with. Yep. I, I consciously tell myself, now drums are different. Drums, I kind of do my drum yeah, groups yeah, the way I do my drum groups. But melodic i'll say in quotes in air quotes because <laughs> it's sitting next to you it doesn't really feel very melodic but the melodic elements i will never have more than three going at once that's kind of like my that's where i limit myself okay. that's a cool because role. i just don't because anything more than that especially with with polymetric polyrhythmic things it all of a sudden just starts to sound not clean and weird and it's all over the place right. um i i kind of like to try and keep things in frequency bands since you can't really eq and master i, I do similar and so it's like if i've already got something in the kind of high mids i don't need another thing in the high mids right. <laughs> you know, i'm just yeah. gonna make that high mid but thing it is good to have shit. something in the high mids it is yeah especially with this when you got rumbly low end we're at four o'clock here um and we haven't even talked to the chat at all yeah well, we're we're gonna we do have to go, so we'll say hello to the chat for a minute, but because we got to go set up for the show. What's up, user friendly? You're welcome back. You've seen user friendly stuff on Instagram, right? Yes, it's got some makes some crazy sound design. Yes, awesome. Clearly a different approach from DJ and <laughs> the, the, the Circo modded OT template. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we kind of have that. That's kind of what the template is. Is kind of inspired by a lot of stuff that I did talking with Circo. Um, cause Circo has been my friend throughout the whole creation of the template. And I've bounced a lot of ideas off of him cause he's got great ideas. Crazy Wabbit. Thank you for this. Oh yeah. You're welcome. Love hearing more about Circo's approach. To, uh, so definitely. the Crazy Wabbit channel is the one where he quoted me calling you Yoda the other day. Oh. <laughs> and I, I made a comment on his thing that it was like, thanks for the shout out. <laughs> oh, well, thanks for the shout yeah, that out. That was very funny. Crazy Wabbit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's doing some really cool stuff with the, with the Oxy one. That's why oh, that's how I found his channel cool. was through the Oxy One stuff. Okay. And he has a pretty small channel just getting started and doing some really cool Oxy One stuff. So. Oh cool. Well look at that. Yeah, check that getting out. a shout out here. Yeah. Rock and roll. Hello from Iceland. What up, Iceland? Nice. <laughs> yeah, it's so good to see all the folks in here. And we're gonna go and uh oh, shit. I like that comment. The theory crafting here is batshit insane. <laughs> yeah, we definitely <laughs> had some like some like button our heads up against some ideas and yeah it's really good like this is i think this is what what more music collaboration should be like is like what's your workflow what's my workflow how do i add a bit of mine to yours how do you add a bit of your, or whatever add a bit of yours to mine in this case yep. um because i'm interested in right now what you're doing that's what you're doing here what and we should do sometime is the next time we get a chance to be together maybe if you hang out in colorado sometime is let's set up your rig and my rig and sync them and play yeah, which and is just what like we almost make did. stuff. Yeah, like that would be just fun. Like make like stuff. one person on drums, one person on, or not, or not. So, have you ever <laughs> seen? Um, have you ever seen the store thing yeah. from ADE? So that's four people that are all. It's not. They're not playing back they just to back. Have clocks, right? They're all kind of contributing, and then you have Speedy J who's listening on headphones to what they're playing, and he has DJ mixers, oh, and he's, he's mixing, mixing in them. their parts. So they're the songs. They're just kind of chucking it out like. Oh, that gives me an idea. And right. they write something. Everybody on sticks the fly. to a key in a tempo or something. Yeah, they right? write something on the fly and he hears it and he's like, Oh yeah, cool. I'm gonna bring that in. That's cool. That's and so he's cool. got this little modular with effects and he's got a nine oh nine in case things all fall apart. He's got kind of like drums. I would love to be go with. his position. That's what yeah. sounds like a really fun spot to me. Yeah. It's like to having the four artists and me mixing them together. I would have a good time doing that. Yeah. That'd I would like really to be cool. any one of those people just to be like Oh yeah, yeah, the, of course, I of love, course. I love the creative. It's it's like the it's like the techno version of like the Grateful Dead, like a jam yeah. band where it's like, oh, that's cool. Now the I'm going to play that thing. Of the Grateful Dead. <laughs> that's such a good analogy. I used that analogy the other day because um, when I was giving that workshop in Denver that the whole idea behind this setup was that I'm old enough to remember when the Grateful Dead was a thing, right? And like, I remember back in the day when they were just massive and people, because they would play different every time, people would trade cassettes of recordings of different shows. Like, well, I was at this show in this year. Oh, cool. Well, I'll trade you this show for this year. And I always thought that that was really cool that you had to be there. 
And if you weren't there, you missed it. It wasn't that it was like you're playing the same track that everybody plays. You're playing the same DJ set. You're playing all your own things that people heard the last time. And then you've got to write all new music for the next time. This way, it's like every single set is different. And if you're not there, you missed it. So right. you have to be there because it was made being influenced by the vibe from the crowd. It's like right. the, um, what was it? I think it was, um, shit, what's his name? The, this Belgian techno producer, he was talking about playing live. And he was saying that for him, it's a, it's a, a conversation between human and machine when you yeah. play live. No, I've heard, I think I've heard this. Before yeah, too. Tom Hates is the one said it. And he was like, you know, the, the machines generate random things that you wouldn't have generated. Oh, yeah, like, for sure. But then you do things that the machines don't do on their own. And you kind of talk back and forth. And you're translating that conversation for the crowd. Right. And then you're translating like the that. energy of the cool crowd energy. into the machine. So you're getting that vibe. And you had to be in the moment or else you missed it. Yeah. And then it's gone. That's definitely how it will be tonight. If you're not yep. here at the show tonight, you'll have missed it. You will have missed it. <laughs> and that will be a sad time for you. But yeah, we should probably conclude because we do need to pack yeah. up and get ready to go to the show. But thanks everybody for coming yeah. in. And thanks, dude, for being Thank you. on Electron thanks for, Talk. Thanks for having me over. Yeah, absolutely. This is the coolest. Just, Eric fun. is the best. This is our second time playing together. Yeah. yeah. Second time playing together. And hopefully we just keep doing this. And I'll absolutely. definitely come down to Colorado. I really Anytime. want to. Anytime. Come down and jam. Love and to have you there. Eat all the food out of your pantry would be really great. No problem. You're, you're invited. I know that you have you that. can mess around with my <laughs> dog. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, all right, cool. Hope to see you guys tonight. Thanks. Uh, at the 4B, 7 o'clock, free show, 21 and up. Come on down. Thanks I'll for tuning you. in. Yeah.